Mayor, we're rolling. Gee, why would he think that? <laughs> Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm calling to order the town commission meeting of March 2nd, 6 p.m. Can we all rise for the, uh, actually, roll call first. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll get our exercises. <laughs> Commissioner Bessler? Here. Mayor Cos? Here. Commissioner DeHasseth? Present. Commissioner Herbert? Here. Vice Mayor Magruder? Here. Additions, deletions, modifications, and approval of agenda. Tracy, you want to mention the slight change, or are we okay? We're okay. Um, we added item 7A earlier today um, for the <coughs> uh, resolution declaring the state of emergency. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve additions, deletions, and modifications to the agenda. So moved. Second. Good. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Tracy, we have yes. a moment. Yes, we have a special presentation tonight for our outgoing Vice Mayor, Don Magruder. Don, if you would please stand up for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the mustache. Yeah, with yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Town staff and the commission sure all of the residents join us in thanking you so much for your dedicated years of service. And your plaque reads, presented to Vice Mayor Don Magruder in appreciation and recognition for his dedicated years of public service on the Town Commission, Board of Adjustment, and Environmental Resource Advisory Board. Thank and you. we are going to miss you so, so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. to socialize a little bit with Vice Mayor Magruder before he leaves, and we have some refreshments for you in the back. Okay, Carla, will you read the announcements? The next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting held on March 16th has been canceled. The next Septic to Sewer Citizens Advisory Committee meeting will be held on April 9th at 8.30 a.m. at Town Hall. The next regular Town Commission meeting will be held on April 6th at 6 p.m. at Town Hall. The presidential preference primary election will be held, will still be held at Town Hall on March 17th, 2020. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. There will be a meet and greet with the incoming Town Commissioner Mar Martin Weishelek at Town Hall on Wednesday, March 4th, beginning at 6 p.m. Please join us for light refreshments and conversations. The Garden Club in the Town of Ocean Ridge present Save the Seas Plastic Free event at Town Hall on Saturday, March 21st, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The purpose of this event is to engage, inform, and inspire everyone to conserve our environment. We hope to see you there. Census Day is April 1, 2020. Please be aware that important census information will be delivered via mail with instructions on how to complete the census information, whether it be done online, over the phone, or through the mail. The Town Commission will consider appointments to the following board positions at the April 6, 2020 Town Commission meeting. Board of Adjustment, two regular members for a three-year term, one regular member for a two-year term, and two, alternate, two alternates for a two-year term. In Planning and Zoning Commission, three regular members for a three-year term. Interested residents must be registered to vote in the Town of Ocean Ridge and submit a resume and letter of interest to the town clerk by the deadline of March 20, 2020. Incumbents are exempted from the resume and letter of interest requirement. Residents who wish to sign up to receive important town notifications and news through Civic Ready should sign up through the town's website or call the town hall for assistance. Next on the agenda is public comment. The mayor will invite the public to speak on the commission on any item that is not printed on the agenda. Public comments on a specific agenda items may be made later in the meeting when the items are taken up. There is a one-time per item 
three minute individual limit for public comments that will be timed by the town clerk. Public comment is not meant to be a question and answer period and there will be no dialogue. Anyone wishing to speak during public comment will approach the podium and state their name and address for the record. And see the town clerk after speaking to fill out a speaker card in order for the minutes to be properly recorded. Okay, everyone clearly understands you speak now and then the item comes up, you're not uh, technically allowed to speak again. But before we do public comment, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to the Garden Club. I don't know how many uh, residents here uh, had the opportunity to go to such a wonderful event. It was fantastic, there was about 100 people. You wouldn't have recognized Town Hall. It was totally redone with palm trees, catered food, full bartenders with Cosmopolitans, martinis and everything, it was pretty good. And it was such a success that towards the end of the night, uh, people actually started spontaneously dancing. So it was a great time ahead by all. And I just want to say thank you so much to the Garden Club. I know a lot of you are pulling your hair out, um, and it was worth it. It was terrific. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Public comment. Does anyone else want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry Brown, Harvard Ride South. I, I just um, uh, ha had a um, brief conversation with the mayor of Boynton Beach. He's, serves on one of the transportation boards that I serve on. Um, just some information for you. I, I talked about the Woolbright Bridge being closed because of the flooding, and I asked him what they planned to do with the water, and he didn't have an answer. He said it was going to go to the intercoastal. So I don't know what they're doing there to try to make that better. But we had three inches of rain in an hour, so it was pretty bad. So uh, maybe that's something people need to talk about because if you had an emergency vehicle you couldn't get through there, you'd have to go all the way around to come in. And when I talked about that aspect of uh, the service that we received from the city of Boynton Beach, which I happen to think is a great service, I personally have had to use it a couple of times, he, um, I don't know what he knows or what, he's, what is going on, but he said, that, oh, well, that cost us a lot more money than what the town is paying you for that service. Now, they don't charge us by the trips, right? It's a, it's a, uh, um, a fee that we pay for all of the service, regardless fire and, and EMS. It's a million bucks. So he said it wasn't covering the service that they were actually providing. So be prepared for Can someone. You repeat that? He made a comment that what we pay them, it's over a million dollars a year, correct? Yes that it wasn't covering the amount of money they were spending to provide the service to us, which doesn't seem real. <laughs> so watch out for the next contract. Is I'll what I'm ask him for the accounting of that. Yeah, <laughs> we need a line-by-line -line accounting of exactly. what it's costing them. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Magically, it'll be $180,000. <laughs> yes. <dollars. laughs> yeah. yeah. Any other? Yes, Betty. Bingham, One East Ocean Avenue. I just want to commend the two uh, police cruisers that ran down those motorcycles with their uh, noise wide open doing wheelies the other day. And they, I don't know whether they're the same ones at about 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night also like to open up their, uh, their noise box. I would love to have the police run them in, too. I was standing there clapping. When's the last time you did a wheelie? Thank you. 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 Hi, good evening. Carol Bessler, 5906 Old Ocean. This isn't a mutual admiration society, but on behalf of the Garden Club, I'm the vice president of the Garden Club. I'd like to thank the town formally for all of their support, uh, especially Chief Hutchins, who was there in the morning helping us set up, and uh, the police crew that helped us with the parking, you all that attended. It was a wonderful attendance, as, as the mayor has pointed out, and we've it's a record-breaking number that we achieved this year and it'll allow us to continue our beautification projects with the town as well as our scholarship. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Approval of consent agenda, Carla? 
Adopt minutes of regular town commission meeting of February 3rd, 2020. Approve the expenditure of up to 11,475 for the townwide emulsion in FY20. So moved. Do we need a second? second? Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, regular agenda items, grant funding. Uh, town manager, Tracy Stevens. Yes, Mayor. Um, Ryan Ruske from RMPK Funding presented information regarding grant funding to the Septic to Sewer Citizens Advisory Committee at the January 9th meeting. Ryan comes to the town highly recommended by other towns such as Hypoluxo who have contracted with his firm for grant administration. He's here tonight to speak with the commission, but before I call him up, I just wanted to point out that at the last Septic to Sewer Citizens, Citizens Advisory Committee meeting, the committee voted to recommend that the town commission consider applying for a planning grant for the septic to sewer conversion process and to expend funds to hire a grant administrator to facilitate that process. The committee also discussed startup funding for the $30 million project, realizing that the town would need matching grant funds as the planning moves further along and noting that the town would likely need to secure around three to $5 million to pay for system de design, engineering and permit expenditures for that process. The town has already banked 342,000 and one cent local government infrastructure surtax revenue that could be earmarked for the conversion project and the committee voted to recommend that the town commission restrict those funds for the project. So if we want to have Ryan yeah. come on up and speak to the commission about grant funding and administration. Thank you for joining us, Ryan. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ryan Ruske. I represent RMBK Funding. Our firm represents counties, cities, municipalities across the state uh, in getting grant funding for capital projects such as the Septic to Sewer uh, Initiative. What we had uh, advised meeting with the septic to sewer committee um, is that to start the planning process, you guys are already way ahead of the game as far as coastal communities with the assessment that your engineer did. We reviewed that packet and there's a lot of great information in there. That normally would be where most people start. They would go after money to get that information. Now we have the opportunity to take the next step and that's what we have proposed to the town is there's several opportunities coming up over the late spring into the summer that can provide money for you guys to take that next step, develop a scope, determine what's needed as far as what your priorities are um, and such things as cost estimates, locations of these septic systems, the major infrastructure that the town will be responsible as well. Uh, those are, that's that next phase that will put you in a position to be ready to go after the larger funding for the actual work. Uh, we've met with town staff, we've met with the septic committee, and we feel like you know, we're in a good position to move forward at that point. Uh, we would focus on two issues. Mitigation is one of them. Um, it's not only water quality, which is you know, a hot topic right now with the sector systems, but the mitigation itself is, is very real. Not only the age of the systems, but also the failure that could occur in a storm situation or heavy rainfall situation. So those two, you know, two paths that we can go on that would really maximize the amount of grant funding we can get. So we will both take into account both those elements to say what's the best path and how does that best affect the town. I'd like to open it up for questions. Uh, when I met with, with you, you ran to the possible monies, which mm -hmm. I think the citizens were Yeah, for the planning grants, we're looking between seventy five and dollars and $150,000. That's the range. We just have to really narrow down what's needed. Like I said, you have a lot of that basic information that uh, the, the town engineer has already done, but what are those next steps? Um, there's no reason you know, to say one way or the other. We just say seventy five to one hundred and fifty. It could be one hundred and fifty. It could be eighty. Um, you know, it really depends on getting that down uh, to an actual number. And we'll work with town staff, we'll work with the committee, and ultimately with the, with the commission here to decide here's the next phase, here's what we want to go after that funding for. So Ryan, if the town commission <coughs> decides to go ahead with hiring your firm for applying for the grant and administering it, it would cost roughly $4,500 or so? Yes, for both. Yeah. Um, okay. Generally, you know, we always kind of leave the administration out until we get the grant and then we can come back and say, but we wanted to give the town that cost um, that it would be with, with the thing of applying for the grant is one phase and then administering the grant after is another phase. It's 45 total. 45 yeah. total. Right. For the planning grants. And, and did you... Um, <laughs> Not for the administration. The administration is included. Yeah, it's generally three for the planning grant, generally 3,000 for the application. That takes you all the way to where you would sign a contract. 
we would be bringing the contract to you saying you're now funded. At that point, if you decided to move forward, sign that grant contract, the administration would then kick in. Whether it's a year, whether it's two years, it's a fixed rate. But we would obviously want you to run the grant for us. Sure, we hope so. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So the other thing was, um, did you rethink, there was availability during the actual structure of the sewer, you thought to uh, perhaps two grants for three million, that would be like sort of our window area, let's say three to six million, is that? Still yeah, that's still in, in discussing further with the committee um, last month or I think a month and a half ago, that's kind of the number we got at, you know, that, that four to five, six million dollar range uh, for the actual capital improvements. Now, that would depend on how you phase it. If you were to phase it out, that money could grow exponentially. I mean, you would, you would say, okay, here's the first phase. We could get three million for the first phase. Second phase, another three million. Um, so you could really grow it if you're willing to take a look. And that's what this planning grant could do as well is to really say, here's a plan, you can either do it all at once, here's what it's gonna cost, or you can phase it and do it in portions. Um, and you know, knowing that doing it in those phases would increase the grant money, but sometimes doing it all in one shot is a, is a better value, and also you know, what's needed in the community. Are a lot of the grants um, that are available matching grants, or are they standalones? At this Pretty point? much all of them are matching in some way. Um, you know, generally, the most that I could think of that you would go after would be a 40% match. Uh, most of them are in that 25% range. There are some that may come up that don't have a match, and I'm talking about the capital improvement. Uh, the planning grants generally have that match, but uh, the capital improvements, some do come up where they're lesser 10% and even some 0%. Uh, there's a couple of programs now that could come out of the legislature this year that have that 0% match. We just have to wait and see. And is the majority of the funds coming from the state level or the county level or private, still private? Sector? Most of it is run by the state. Um, a lot of it is federal money that passes through the state. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the water quality that, that you would look at, uh, for instance, we just got a water quality grant for Hypoluxa for 400000 to remove their last remaining septic tank system. They have a very small amount left. We had got the first grant many years ago to remove a majority on the coast or on the water, and then they had a little pocket uh, on the other side of US-1, and we were able to get that based upon the water quality savings, and it's you know being so close to the lagoon there. Uh, but most of it is federal. It's a run by FDEP or by South Florida Water Management or one of those entities, but it is passed through money. You, uh, you had mentioned that we already spent a lot of money on the planning already. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to recapture that as part of grant going forward? So can we look back at the engineer's bills and kind of accumulate them mm -hmm. and put that into the grant? Unfortunately not. Okay. Um, nice I wish. Some, nice some grants that we do, with, nice you know, some grant programs we do with do allow for that retroactivity. Uh, generally, all the ones that deal with any sort of federal money or these water issues do not. So the you just, the money you've spent won't go to waste because it's a great basis and, right. and mm -hmm. that along with the committee, all those things would go into an application where the, the granting body would look at it and say they are serious about what they're doing and we want to help them. Ryan, will it pay for your cost to administer the grant? Not for the planning grant, no. Okay. Some of the ones that we'll go after later on will cover some of the administration costs. Okay. Vulnerability study that we're doing is giving you more information. For sure. Work. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that these same planning grants would fund, you know, down the road. If you're already doing it, that's great. Um, but anything, the more data we have, the more information such as that, the better the applications are. I think that's supposed to be done in June, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's finished by June. Yep. What, but did we spend that money already? Or yeah. Oh, it's already been given. Well, we, it has not been expended it has yet. Not been spent, right, so could that count? Because we didn't spend it yet, we did approve it. Unfortunately, the timing probably wouldn't work. Okay. You know, if you're going to be done in June, they're going to want to get paid well before that. And by the time we would find out, even in the first one, which would be probably late April, that we would go after um, if that was decided by the town, um, you wouldn't know until October, or November if you got it. Okay. So that, you know, it, nothing yeah. is a short turnaround in this business. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you had an opinion on the timeline. Mm -hmm. of when um, sewers would be mandated to the Barry Rounds. So maybe you could tell what it is. <laughs> um, it is a moving target. It is. I, I guess okay. this is just the Yeah, and, and I explained this to the, the septic committee as well, is, you know, each year it gets more and more traction. Um, you'll see it in this year. You know, they've already started one of the major water bills that is going to come out probably. It looks like it has bipartisan support is going to make it through. Is tightening the regulations on the septic tanks, their inspections in coastal communities. Uh, what it ends up being at the end of the session, who knows? But right now, that's a first step. And each year, there gets more and more traction. Each year, um, you know, more and more discussion is made about different actions to be taken. So, we, you know, it, 
a roundabout figure that I would give that I believe within five years, the coastal communities will have some kind of regulation place for them to switch out. It may not be immediate, it may be phased, um, but it will start within five years. That's my belief, and that's only my opinion. Yeah. And that could change based on who's exactly. sitting in the seat, correct? Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that changes based upon politics, it changes based upon climate conditions. Um, you know, a lot of times, if we do have major storms, a lot more money opens up, mm -hmm. so that may, you know, they may try to, you know, get that done quicker if they do have the money access. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly, you can see the momentum coming. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, would you do me a great favor, and if you could sit in that seat right there, is okay. there any public questions, comments that Brian could address? Yes. Is there a confidence level about the... Uh, you you got to actually go to the podium. Mm -hmm. Is there a confidence... <laughs> 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 Sir, please state your name and address for the record. Leonard Phillips, 5505 North Ocean Boulevard. Is there a confidence level that the hiring of this firm uh, will produce uh, grants uh, that are being applied for? Just the history of the firm. Mm -hmm. We've yes. done it for our, some of our neighbors. Okay, and they have come forth with yes. that, with that yes. recommendation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner's discussion? We are I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Okay, do I hear a motion? Should uh, I have Don? Yeah, I was going to let Don. <laughs> yeah. Don's going to do all the motions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we could do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I move to authorize Town Manager Stevens to negotiate a contract with RMPF funding for grant administration services to apply for a planning grant for septic to sewer conversion and to expend funds in the amount not to exceed 4500 for that purpose. I'll Just second. a clarification for the record, it's RMPK funding. RMPK. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Now, Tracy, there's a second half to this, mm -hmm. apparently, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so... Do we need to discuss it? Public comment, come back to the commissioners. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. All right, uh, well, why don't you explain what the second half of this is? Okay, so the Septic to Sewer Citizens Advisory Committee um, voted to dedicate our one cent infrastructure surtax money to the septic to sewer conversion project, and they would like you to dedicate uh, the funding for that for the project. Which they is? They want that commitment to make that restricted funding for the project. It's the 342000 It's right. 342000 now, but uh, it grows every year yeah. for up to 10 years. Okay. Any public comment on Commission discussion? Um, if, if I can, just ask Tracy, on the mm -hmm. surtax committee, this mm -hmm. does not impact them. I'm trying to think because I... I just noticed it here, you know, right. because the surtax committee would make a recommendation, I guess, was their recommendation kind of along these same lines they or? Don't, I don't think uh, as part of the county ordinance, I don't think they, they make recommendations. We can ask them for a recommendation, what their job is to make sure the town spends the funds according to the ordinance. And this is a qualifying expenditure. Um, no, that's that's enough. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, it just dawned on me when I saw mm -hmm. that there. So okay, yeah. that sounds good. Yeah. I've also asked uh, Tracy in, in the administrative meeting that we had with the FEMA funding that came in was one hundred and fifteen thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when you all get when the commission gets to the budgeting process, that we consider putting that one hundred and fifteen towards that 342 because we've got to start building that fund for matching and that's money that's come in mm -hmm. that we can probably not include in the budget so that's just for general discussion future, future. when you get to the budget <coughs> okay do i hear a motion so Don. moved oh sorry <laughs> no Don. you have to say so moved so moved so moved to do what we gotta, we gotta know what it is no well the well, you could read it. Oh, read you it. want me to read it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, here. Second one. Where is it? You don't have it, but some reason. Oh, I don't have it. I move to approve the recommendation of the Septic to Sewer Citizens Advisory Committee to dedicate the one cent penny sales tax revenue for the purpose of septic to sewer conversion. I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 For those of you who don't know, I'm a fiscal <coughs> water boy. 
Okay, beautification request. Tracy, uh, item number three. Tracy? Yes, so the town typically budgets for beautification projects in the amount of 20000 per year, as was budgeted for in FY20. The town recently received two requests for beautification funding, the first from Colonial Ridge and the second from Sab the Sable Island Beautification Committee. Each proposal requests funding from the town. However, residents in each group are willing to provide matching funds for their proposed projects. Representatives from each group are here tonight to present their proposals to the commission. Colonial Ridge is requesting the town remove the pavement along the right of way on Old Ocean Boulevard near their dune property. And we do have some photos that we will show you um, regarding that when Mr. Lettuce comes up to talk to the commission. Um, and they would like us to grade the area in preparation for installation of grass and native plantings in that area. They're proposing that the town pay for the removal and the grading, and then the residents of Colonial Ridge will pay for the installation of the grass and the native plantings, and they will also pay for irrigation and maintenance of the plantings thereafter, year after year. Um, the Sable Island proposal is attached um, to your packages so that you could review it ahead of time, but they'll also be here to talk to you about that. And they're requesting funding for lighting to address safety concerns that they have on the island, as well as replacement plantings from hurricane damage and beautification to the bridge in that area. Staff recommends moving forward with both projects with funding in FY20 as well as FY21, respectively. Um, if we want to, do you want to have Mr. Lettuce come yeah, up first? And so we're starting with Colonial, Colonial Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Good evening. My name is George Lettuce. I'm the president of uh, Colonial Ridge Club. As you can see by the photographs, I'm sure most of you have walked your dog's bicycle road by there on a regular basis. Um, a short history. The community was built in 1965 through 68, and the buildings that are on the east side of A1A is about 1,000 feet to Old Ocean. So the, the, the plan at that point was that folks that were on the A18 side would take their cars up and park along that blacktop. Uh, as time went on, that was getting not feasible. And so there are signs everywhere on the fences that says no parking, this private property, and so on. And the space is 203 feet long by 10 feet wide, so it's 2,000 square feet. Um, I had brought this conversation up about a year and a half ago when Jamie Tickham was uh, was here and we met with uh, I brought a couple of the board members with me to at least introduce ourselves to the town and uh, Jamie and myself and the board members along with the chief were there and we talked about safety and security along that stretch and uh, it got to the point that Jamie had basically said if you can come up with a plan and then we would look at potentially supporting the process um, at that time I engaged conversation with Jerry Lauer who was <laughs> instrumental in getting me some sketches made and uh, talked to some nurseries and a variety of uh, people. Um, unfortunately, I, I had too many commitments inside and outside the, uh, the development, and so I really couldn't spend the time on it. So in the last three to five months, many of the residents who are here tonight, thank you for showing, uh, had said, we need to do something about it. It's, it's just getting out of hand. Uh, the problem is that people, it's the only stretch from Anna Street to Briny Breezes that's open. So consequently, anybody driving along Old Ocean that sees that space, they ignore the signs, and they just pull up, park, have their lunch on their cell phone, FPL trucks, garbage trucks, everybody. Then, obviously, when they're in the cars, it's open, they want to come through, they see a gazebo, they see a boardwalk, they see showers, they think it's a public facility. <coughs> Many times, I've tried to uh, shush people away myself, uh, the, ch the chief had taught me a valuable lesson. He said, uh, basically, don't confront people if they don't leave. And unfortunately, I had a few that didn't leave, but that was resolved. So basically, um, as Tracy said, we're looking for the town to help us um, in, in the manner of picking up the blacktop and grading it. Um, so basically, what we're looking to do is to develop a design with the assistance of people and organization inside and outside the community, particularly the, uh, the ocean, the, the garden club. Once a plan is developed and approved by all parties, we'll present it to the town. Um, 
we would then like to put it out to bid. Uh, the funding of this pro project, we hope, will come from a variety of sources, not necessarily totally from Colonial Ridge, um, which includes raising funds through donations as well as participation from Colonial Ridge themselves. The ongoing maintenance of that area uh, and the finished product will be the responsibility of Colonial Ridge, which does include the irrigation. And you can see by the pictures, you see the grassy area there. there that is filled with irrigation. And so the bottom part near the fence is, uh, uh, has full irrigation through it. I talked to our irrigation company. Very easy to put circular heads on those, and we should not have an issue with the uh, irrigation in, of that area. So um, we're hoping we could move forward with it with your participation. Um, we have a, a slogan in our community, which is uh, safety, security, and sustainability. And I think this project justifies that. So thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. George. I have a question. Are you are you planning to put curbing um, between when you bring out the, the grass to the edge of the street? Will there be a curb there, or will it just come down to the asphalt? We would like to come down to the asphalt, but have something along that, that edge of the asphalt against the, the road so it deters any, any vehicles coming by there. It could be plantings, it could be rocks, it could be anything like that. Okay. So something to... When someone's driving, they're not going to want to park on that side, for sure. And so. one other thing, uh, you use the word matching. So are you looking for matching, or are you looking for us to do a certain amount of task, and then Colonial Ridge is responsible for the second half of the task? Yeah, I, uh, as we said, uh, the town would potentially f fund picking up the, the blacktop, grading it. Then what I would, we, in part, Colonial Ridge Club would fund the plantings and so on. We, but we also, depending on the pricing of it, we would look at some donations from outside right, sources. But the donations, we would consider part of your match. <coughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes, that's right. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay. Public comment? Yes. Let's see if somebody beats you, Terry. No? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Uh, no, I th this is a good project and it needs to get done. Uh, the, the more asphalt we remove near the dune, the better. Um, my concern is what kind of planting would go in there. According to DEP, everything that's east of the asphalt in this area is dune. So whatever plant there, I think, has to meet their certification about what you're going to put there. If sea grapes or what whatever they decide to put there has to be, I think, approved by DEP, in my opinion. Um, and the other thing is there's some Hawaiian scavula that needs to be removed that's at the other end of that driveway, which is not a native plant and is prohibited in your own code. Uh, the other issue is step off. There are a lot of people who walk along there, as you know, vehicles come, and they use that for lots of reasons, parking, um, but there's no area to step off in that part. So. Would there be a step-off area for pedestrians near the entrance going up? These are just safety concerns that I think the town traffic engineer has to review. Yeah. Yes. Well, when Chair. it moves forward, Colonial Ridge will work closely with Tracy okay. and the engineer mm -hmm. to make sure that your extension doesn't go to the extent that the tar currently goes. That's Correct. all. Correct. Yes. Correct. Anybody else? It'll look beautiful. Any uh, discussion? I think it's a good project. And the other thing is, it's really a benefit for the entire town. Oh, yeah, because more green. What, how many pedestrians do you think walk on the old ocean? Uh, there? Let me make one other road. comment. There will be 400 plus people walking across that bridge in a year from now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Protection. It's not going to get any easier. going to get more congested. Chief, any estimate of how many people walk on old ocean? About 400 were in front of me this morning, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, Old Ocean is like part of the town. <laughs> and it happens, that strip happens to be yeah. attached to you. There ain't been too many at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'll tell you Okay. That's your time well, part of the magic funds will come from the toll booth that we set up on Walmart Road. <laughs> on Walmart. Well, no, I was thinking you could put a pedestrian toll gate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll do these, I guess, one at a time. So make motions on do we want them separate? Um, why don't we have a presentation from Sable Island, Sable Island. Committee first? And then a, and, yeah, and, but then, then, and then a discussion of both. some commissioners agree with one, don't agree with the other? You just hash that out at the end. Well, right. We have to do two votes, that's what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah, you can at the so end, though. You, should, you should hear both. You see what I'm saying? Mm. If we hear them both together and they're 
and there tends to be a discussion that they're not both going to fall into line, then we could separate them, right? I was but just I'm saying, getting let's, yeah. let's clear this one out because it looks like it's a consensus vote. Yeah? They won't mind hearing Sable Island. No, no. Uh, we'll do Sable Island and Lee Fall. I'm thinking this they need to go to together. Simplify. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I'm thinking they could be together like Tracy's got here, and if there's a problem, which I can't imagine there might be, but if there's a problem, then we can separate them then. Well, I definitely will have some questions Input. on the same. Okay, so let's hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear them. What would everybody like to do? We'd like to vote on Colonial Ridge or mix and match them. It seems much simpler to me to deal with Colonial Ridge than say. So we're going to have to redevise the uh, suggested motion if we don't All right. just right. go Save forward. Go exactly. forward. <laughs> That's kind of so we need the presentation from Save Alive. Yeah. Good evening. My name is A.J. Emanuel. I'm here representing the Sable Island uh, Safety and Beautification Project. Um, I live at 33 Sable Island Drive, and my wife and I are new residents in Ocean Ridge, and we, lo we love it here. Um, the, uh, I'm going to cover just the highlights of the work that we've done. There was a presentation or a deck that we, um, we submitted to, uh, to, to this office, I think, on uh, January 21st, which has all the detail of the project, so I'll just cover some of the highlights. Um, to, to start, um, there's a number of different committee members that worked on the project with us. There's probably over 20% of the, the residents or the homeowners on the island, um, upward of 20% that have worked on the project. Um, so from, from an agenda perspective, um, the topics I'm going to cover is the, I'll do a situation overview, the resident response to the situation that, that surfaced initially that started our work a summary and um, and again I'll keep it at a high level the um, from a situation overview we had a rash of car break-ins in March of 2019 um, we met and what we identified was that there really was inadequate lighting on the island um, so we um, so we took an initiative on that front we also, uh, that morphed into a beautification initiative as well. We identified some poor and dying vege vegetation that hadn't been replaced from early 2000. There was some damage from hurricanes uh, that, was, um, that was never addressed, and there was no sprinkler system at the bridge or island market or signage on, on the bridge. So these are pictures, um, just to contrast um, the uh, Sable Island Bridge versus the Inlet K Bridge. And as you can see on Sable Island, there's, um, there's no lights, uh, there's no sign, there's no, the vegetation is really very sparse and, um, because it was not replaced, as I mentioned. Uh, as opposed to the Inlet K Bridge where um, there's, there's lights, there's signage, and the uh, vegetation there is very attractive. Um, so we, we held an island meeting in uh, 2019 to address specifically the safety concerns, and that was our, our first and foremost priority on the committee. So we held an island meeting on the short term. We identified and requested that all residents start leaving their lights on, which everyone did and does when they're at home. So the island is better lit with, um, with the home lighting, but it's really not something we could rely on, and it's really not adequate. Um, long term, we focused on lighting up the common areas and looking at enhancing pole lighting. There's three common areas which I'll go through that we would like to light up, which we think would significantly enhance the lighting and um, the safety of the, uh, on the island as a result. Um, we researched lighting options. We just defined costs to implement them, and um, that was uh, those costs were, were defined in our, our initial submission. From a beautification perspective, we met with multiple landscapers, um, four to be exact, and um, so we feel fairly confident with the numbers that we received from the landscaping um, folks around the landscape design, and we obtained various ideas and um, recommendations which resulted in our cost proposal. So um, our, our priority, again, is safety first. We'd like to bring electric to the three common areas the island bridge and the two triangles. We'd like to install up lighting and some down lighting um, on the, the bridge, but up lighting in all of the common areas. And we want to add incremental pole lighting um, as, is, uh, as is necessary once we, uh, once we see what we get from the up lighting. Um, there's currently six poles that are lit um, on, the, on, on the entire island. 
Um, also, when we spoke with the four landscapers, all of them said that we do not have adequate irrigation to sustain the vegetation at the bridge. And so we, um, we met with a, a few folks here at the town and identified the cost of what, what it would be to run water to the bridge. We have water on the two triangle areas, but not on the bridge. And that's where the vegetation has take the big, taken the biggest, uh, the brunt of the hit. Um, so we would plant new veg vegetation, add and add signage, and um, and some other things. The bulk of the cost of the proposal, seventy percent of the cost of the proposal, would be spent on the bridge, which is the the first area um, that's shown by the arrow. The second area is the um, the first triangle where we would look to just bring in uh, electric to uplight that. In the third area, we would also bring in electric to uplight that. And that's um, predominantly the extent of the work that would go on, some modest um, vegetation on the second and third triangle. So um, in summary, we're requesting, um, we require additional lighting and um, refurbished landscaping to improve the island safety and beautification to meet the, the remainder of the Ocean Ridge standards, which is beautiful, the town. Um, we're requesting town funding to enable that and um, the residents stand ready to support the town in implementing the improvement recommendations. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any questions for me? Questions? Okay. Your, your proposal that you put, that you gave, uh, not, not here, you did the highlights, an amazing amount of work. <laughs> I can see why it would have taken you a full year to absolutely do it. And all those people. And, and, and not unlike um, Old Ocean Boulevard being the walkabout for the south end of town, if you've ever been on Sable Island, especially during the season, we are the walkabout for the north end of town because we're a self-contained, very quiet, very safe private island during the day. So we have everybody who seasonally walks there. We seem to be the default dog park, which is a lot of fun. My dog en <laughs> enjoys it. So um, I just wanted to, joy to, to draw that analogy also. Uh, thanks, Christine. So, okay. Good. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, and you did a great job. Uh, you know, Thank you. It's a fabulous layout and all. But is there a way to cut it a little bit? Are some of the trees causing the problem? Like, because you know, you're talking about th well, forty thousand dollar project. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to throw in about ten, so it's a thirty thousand right. dollar project. Right. The last couple projects we've approved was I think Harbor Drive was like about ten, and I, I think some people helped because I think they came in at around forty and they brought it down to ten. Is that correct? Yeah. Or um, I got my numbers wrong? Yes, yeah. sixty-eight. They started at 68. Oh, they started at 68 and came to 10. <laughs> Is there any, you know, and then we did Beachway and that was like 15 grand. Mm -hmm. I know Beachway is a lot smaller than what you guys are proposing. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to kind of get it down so that it kind of, you know, looks kind of level so we're offering the same amount for beautification or something close to it? Yeah, so certainly we could do more work on that front. Um, when we spoke with all four contractors, they all came in at about $20,000 in total for the vegetation. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was a fair number. Mm -hmm. um, we, we spoke with um, uh, Creative, uh, Creative Spaces was, was one of the suppliers. Um, we, we used another company from Del Rey um, that was... Uh, Master Gardeners, um, we had a landscape firm, KWD, come out, and we had Delray Gardens. So all of them came in within the same price range in terms mm -hmm. of what we talked about doing, which really was adding, which, which looked similar to Inlet K. I don't know, um, I don't have visibility to what it costs to do Inlet K, but what we'd be looking to do would be similar to that. And that's where we sent the landscapers and said, we're looking to kind of mirror this because we'd like some continuity or consistency mm -hmm. across the island. So that's where the numbers came from. Mm -hmm. And certainly we could revisit that. Um, I don't know how much different um, the, the pricing would be because I, I think we've done a fair bit of work to get numbers on it thus far. And how about the community? Do you think the community can chuck in a little, few more bucks to kind of get it closer to so so, so what currently we've been approving you know lately. currently i think we've got you know between what we have collected and pledges i think we're looking at between 20 and 25 percent we have other challenges going sure. on in the island right now so some of the residents are a bit sensitive about committing to more funding as a result of you know some of the things that are going on the waterfront mm -hmm. okay. thank so, you thanks um to sort of follow what phil said 
Didn't you tell uh, Tracy that Inlet K was eight thousand dollars? No, not for Inlet K. But no. excluding the we repair. We don't have the price for Inlet K. So there's a difference. See, there's like bridge repair. Uh -huh. I think you're talking about Harbor. You're no, talking Harbor about Harbor. Went from sixty-eight thousand to eight thousand. Yeah, thanks right. to Jerry's hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but up in the top end of town, Island Drive, that was a bridge repair that was then some money was spent up here. Right, but he's talking about Inlet K, not Island I, Drive. I know that, but what I'm trying, I'm trying to echo Phil's point. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed one of the items in here is a, I think it's what I call a tombstone or a marker for $6,000. Is that what the Norwich Stone Island marker with cap is? Is this like an entrance? Yeah, that was it, it, the, the vision would be that there would be a stone marker or a marker on either side of the island. And certainly that's something that we could revisit. That yeah. was mm -hmm. really kind of, you know. Um, yes, $6,000. Yeah, sure. See, we're, the, the way I read the proposal is that there's thirty-nine thousand dollars needed under this. Proposal. Correct. Well, the town's actually paying thirty thousand dollars for that, so it's not like matching funds right. here. Right. 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 So that that's my problem. Yeah. I, I gladly would approve a vote with you on this, but the cost is just a little too steep. And there's items in here that I think you know aren't necessary. Uh huh. Uh, or or something that is for the the residents of the island to to pay for. Uh huh. Because if we pay for your marker, we're gonna. What do we do with the next street that comes to us? It says we want a six thousand dollar, you know, marker for our street. Uh -huh. That's the problem we face. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know how the other projects were funded, so I had no visibility or transparency of that. We just did a um, um, entranceway marker for uh, Harbor Drive, north and south. Um, probably ran. I mean, it's it's a sign similar to other signage that we have. It has the Ocean Ridge logo and whatnot. It's not nearly as sophisticated as what you're mm -hmm. proposing, um, but it would certainly knock a chunk out of your uh, out of your request. Well, so if we were able to address that, would the rest of the pro proposal be viable? I just would like to you know go back with some direction or feedback did, did to the team. Did you investigate solar lighting, or is it just not? not we efficient? we did we did. Yeah. In fact, we put solar lighting there, and unfortunately, we don't get enough of sun to keep the it solar lighting do going it. adequately through the night. I tried so, it in my yard. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not the technology is just not there yet. Yeah. And there was a, uh, a a resident from Harbor Drive, Jerry, who was asking about the planting. Uh -huh. um, the, apparently, the plantings that you guys desire aren't necessarily. Uh, conducive to Florida's climate, they require a lot of water, et cetera, et cetera. Is so that correct, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Jerry Lauer, to Harbor Drive. Did I misspeak? There are um, a few things on their planting list that I would recommend they look at native plants as an alternative to. Um, they may or may not know that philodendron there are many people, my wife included, <laughs> who just touching one get blisters. I don't think you want to have them in a public thoroughfare. There are other potential water savings by having plants that are less water hogs than some of the things that are on the list. Asking a contractor to take a look at one existing neighborhood and say, we want this look, they're going to come back and say, here is that look. I think they could come back and take a look at it and uh, potentially reduce the price in what's being planted and still achieve that lush look. Um, and I'd be delighted to take a peek at what they've got going and work with Tracy to see if there's any improvements. Does that work for you, EJ? So you avail yourself of Jerry. Certainly we, yes. So yes. certainly we welcome any suggestions on, um, you know, we, we didn't really lock down on any plants. Yeah. We got some ideas of what we could put in there, so we would welcome and, and be willing to work with whoever sure. on that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got a lot of public comment. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Stella Cove, 204 Beachway. I was trying to get your attention because the audience does not understand what you're all talking about as far as money because no one has said what this is going to cost. So we can't even think, I can't wrap my brain around 
how are they asking for 40,000, 50,000, 60,000? What is the project since so they've done so much let me work on that, it? Because, sorry for the confusion. I thought that everyone had caught no. the numbers. Thank you. $40,000 is the total cost of this particular project. Um, and the town, they're asking for the town to pay 30,000 of the 40,000 cost. That's what we're talking on. Over a two year period. Yes. Tw 20 year one, but there's only 20,000 available each year. Um, Colonial Ridge, correct me if I'm wrong, George, uh, is going to cost the town under ten thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the cost. Doesn't it say it says twenty thousand for beautification for this year, for one this year, year right? For ten thousand, right? Next year, so yeah. that's coming up to thirty, not right. forty. Right. Yeah, no, but no, they're paying, paying their 30. own ten. They're paying the ten. Right. 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 Ten of their own. My comment, please. Yes. Um, and looking at that, there's a, there's a lot of plumbing and electrical work which would require a permit and a licensed contractor. Mm -hmm. And there would be ongoing expenses. Someone's be paying for the electricity. Would that be the town? Because it would be hooked up to the town line that's there. The water and electric would be a reoccurring expense for the town. Yes, that's correct, that correct, Terry, because it's on so town property. So that's ongoing expense. It's on town property. Right. Yes. Right. Thank you. Do we have an estimate on what that ongoing expense might be? Um, generally, for sprinkler system for irrigation for a particular area is about thirty dollars a month, um, and then lighting again thirty or forty dollars, depending on how many lights are put in. But there's also the maintenance per month. The maintenance on top. Mm -hmm. That's just the yeah. utilities. Yep. Yes. Uh, Bruce Hinden, 5 Sable Island Drive. Um, I've been involved in this committee for the past uh, year that the, the uh, island has gotten together. And I think the impression is that the commission thinks that the island wants you, the town to pick up the majority of the cost. But that's not really adequate, uh, true. Okay, we, we've been trying to defer a lot of the costs wherever we could. And we have uh, uh, people who live on Sable Island Drive willing to do some of the labor. We have, we're trying to defer a lot of the lighting costs to FPNL. Um, there is infrastructure involved here, such as you alluded to the electrical and the plumbing. It's just because it's town property that the, the benefit goes to the, the whole township. I think it, it raised you know, property values and, and uh, at least get Sable Island up to our neighboring islands where, where funds have already been uh, allocated. Um, many of the residents, I've, I've only been here for nine years, but many of the residents that have been here longer feel, you know, when plantings have been lost over the last two decades, nothing has been done. So now that we're trying to do something, it may, the actual total numbers may seem larger, but when you, you know, allocated over the last 20 years, I think we're just trying to get back to speed. We're not trying to outdo our neighbors, okay? And if, if, if there's a specific issue of a town, you know, the, the marker or the whatever, we're willing to look at whatever. We're not trying to right. uh, be right. outlandish the about is this. The beautification fund is, you know, $20,000 a year. So you guys are taking 20. But there's a safety issue as well. Totally yeah. get okay. the safety issue. I'm not against it. I'm just saying that we don't want to have you know not the, the next street come to us and say we want this when it's uh, it's not it, it it starts up right through the town and we only have twenty thousand dollars a year. That's it. Yes. There's sir. three different sections there, correct? We're talking bridge yes. and two triangles. Right. So we're right. talking three, three specific, areas. right? Three specific areas, but not the major just one. Money is on right, right, right. The bridge, which is us. Steve, when you asked me to look at that plan a couple of days ago, I was not aware of the safety issue that was part of it. It sounds to me like they need to break the lighting thing into a public safety request and not That's a good idea. merge it as part of a beautification. And I think you'll probably come up with the number you're looking at. That's a good idea. I just took your breakdown and I, I did kind of a back of the napkin to do that. And I came up with, and I may not that's not my strong suit, but I came up with $10,000 for lighting, pretty much more or less. Yes. 
then, right? So, so lighting and irrigation are, are 15. If you add, oh, okay. if you add the lighting okay. plus the irrigation, that's 15 of the total cost. So significant. So, so with that, can, are you talk, talking 10,000 per? No, no, overall, yeah. of that entire number. For all three years, that's right. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? All right. Good. Whoop. Oh, Betty, Betty. It's a little hard to get our hands around the whole thing because it's very hard to hear you all talking. You don't use your microphones. You really have to strain. But question, how many of the areas in Ocean Ridge are lit? I think there are a lot that are not lit and then no during turtle season. They all have to be turned off. And number two, are we going to increase the property values if we put this much money in, and maintenance in a particular area? Uh, what is, I mean, it seems to be an awful lot to be spent on just one place for the maintenance and the lights and, and so on. <laughs> I was waiting for you, Jerry. But I'm in agreement with Jerry. I think if this is a safety issue, it should come way under a different umbrella. And if we do have an issue, I think it should be taken care of now. And if there's other areas in town that are safety issues with lighting, I think they should also be looked at and taken, taken into. Now, on beautification, I think maybe they can just rework their plan, work with Jerry. Uh, Crown, I mean, uh, Colonial Ridge, those people are planning to put in. I'm sure maybe this island is planning to put in, hopefully. Um, and I think we can kind of all work together because I think we all are looking for the same purpose. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question though? With the, um, the lighting, you said it was like $10,000. Are we talking uh, the low lighting also besides the lighting poles or are we talking about all of the lighting? Okay, so low lighting is going to be a safety issue? Like, I mean, that's a safety issue? Well, like, because isn't it just the highlight trees, you know? Up, it's up lighting. So oh. the light areas that are pitch black right now, at night, okay. when, when people, residents don't have their lights on, the triangle areas, the areas around there are, are buffed. So uh, okay, but. That would be up lit, and then there would be down lighting from the, uh, from the poles. Right, but is the safety issue the people robbing the cars, or is people are people tripping because they can't see where they're walking? No, it was the, it was it was triggered by the break-ins, but the darkness. People typically don't walk at night around the island because it's dark. I have a dog. I won't walk around at night because it's dark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to make any comment on lighting and public safety? Are you good? Decreasing the places for anyone to hide and having proper security style lighting not over the top so that it complies with, and here's my push, remember turtle season started yesterday, mm -hmm. um, is always a good idea. Um, I think you have to do a cost benefit analysis on the town's part and to determine what is appropriate. Okay. Well, thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, Commissioner, discussion? Well, the discussion's been, now we're separating it into beautification and possibly public right. safety and lighting. So is there a simplified way to break these? Not that we don't want it beautified and lit at the same time, but just to make it a little more palatable, which seems to be the pushback financially. So, so what could we what Well, could is we the do? solution to have uh, e EJ, correct? EJ. EJ. Yeah. And uh, Tracy and Wayne and the police chief sit down on the lighting safety issue? and come to a town paid budget for that. Uh, and then you go back to your plans and see what the savings will be and um, any other savings that are available. Get the number, uh, you know, to a, to a number that- Separating uh, the beautification yeah. and the lighting. So if we yeah. got the lighting separate and then we re-looked at the beautification with like you said, maybe the plaque didn't need to be uh, immediate and fancy if it was more important to get the plantings in there and mm -hmm. utilizing maybe more Florida friendly planting, which would bring down the monthly maintenance and what have you. Right? How does that sound? Yeah. No, I, I doable, totally right? agree. That's mm -hmm. what I would suggest. Does that sound? So, 
So you guys, and then at the next meeting, we'll go to the beautification part of it, because hopefully you guys will be able to come up with a safety budget by the next meeting. Lighting and safety budget, yes? Okay. Should be, should, yeah. Would that come from a separate okay. one? <laughs> we can budget find, line yeah, item? find it in, yes, okay. we'll find it in the budget. Yeah, because that's a safety issue. And look, we have a budget, <clears throat> a new budget kicking in in October before it comes to worse, right? I think that makes sense. Yeah. So what's the best way to deal with this? Well, we'll just now sever Sable <laughs> Island off this motion. Like we'll you just wanted do to. do a motion <laughs> on Colonial Bridge. Everyone like agree with this? Okay. All right, would somebody like to make a motion on Colonial Ridge? Can, can we not just, if, if, if we are severing off, I mean, I, these folks what? have been working on this for a year, and, and there's a heck of a lot of work versus just no disrespect, just as a picture that, that was done. So, I mean, there, there's a lot going into this. If, if we can say that we will look at it next month and yeah. give a 30-day click, that's okay. I just think at some point, I, I need to really know what, what you're trying to get at, I guess. So bringing it back next with month. Next month. Yeah, yeah, to we're bringing it back. But, but, with, if, but if you reallocate funds tonight for Colonial, then it impacts potentially. No, no, no. They, no, they don't need the money until after you use the next money. They're yeah. oh, fiscal yeah. 22 or 21. 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We're good. So it doesn't impact you guys. Sorry. So yeah. the goal here is at the next meeting, um, you guys will have severed out with the town's help, severed out the lighting. safety slash lighting. And then there'll be a separate proposal on the beautification concept. And beautification would include irrigation. And right. environmentally friendly plants, I right. think, Which, as Jerry was bringing yep. up. Uh, you know, we need to take a look at the plants that probably require less irrigation, uh, which More would help friendly. on the financial side of it also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody happy with that solution? I think so. All right, so can we have a motion on Colonial Ridge? which is the last mm -hmm. phrase in this motion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I um, make a motion to allocate $10,000 for the project in Colonial Ridge in the year, um, fiscal year 21 budget for 10 grand, up to $10,000. Well, if, if we can, and I don't know, Tracy would be more of the budgeting person, but I, I think the reason that she has language in here on directing her right. to allocate 10000 is it's not even this upcoming budget. It's, mm -hmm. it's the 21 budget. So uh, you may want to use, you know, that you move to direct the town manager to budget up to 10000 for the project in the fiscal year 21 uh, budget uh, for Colonial Ridge Beautification Project. Yes. Okay, I agree with that. <laughs> so moved. So moved. So moved. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Okay, and then um, do you want to just make a motion to defer right. the Sable yeah, Island defer beautification the Sable for Island next month? A beautification slash safety until the April meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll move that motion forward that we. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 So make sure it's on the agenda. If you have problems, yes. come back to us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was wondering also, uh, Mayor, should we kind of do this beautification going forward where the town comes up with ideas and, and especially like the lighting issue, you know, if they have a lighting issue, are there other lighting issues around the town that we have to deal with? And the same with the beautification. Are there other areas that need updating and have Tracy Probably. or the town manager look at that yeah. instead of, you know, it's the town wide comes plan, to basically. Yeah, Correct. we can do a, a plan similar to what you have for your paving plan that right. shows you exactly which areas need to be paved. We could show you a plan on which areas you have that need to be beautified, and we could do some sort of um, this area should be done in this year, this area moves to this year yeah. on a rotating mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. good. So if any citizens have a safety lighting issue or beautification, just bring it to the town manager's attention and we'll get the list started. Okay. Okay, item number four, second reading and adoption of ordinance 2019-15, which is our artificial grass. Uh, Brian? Well, actually, Carla. I think Carla needs to read the <laughs> caption. And an ordinance of the town of Ocean Ridge, Florida, amending its code of ordinances by amending chapter one, general provisions, section one dash three, definitions, amending chapter 66, environmental regulations, article four, landscaping division two, water efficient landscape, 
Section 66-141, Water Efficient Landscape, Co Landscape Code, enacting Section 66-142, Artificial Turf Slash Synthetic Grass, to provide for regulations regarding artificial turf slash synthetic grass, providing for codification, repeal of conflicting ordinances, severability, and an effective date. Uh, no, the only thing I just want to point out based on the comments received at the last meeting or the joint meeting between the Town Commission and the Planning and Zoning Commission under Section 66141, subsection D, variances, I had stricken that as it's not really applicable for this section. I'm not quite sure what was intended by that sentence, but uh, the Board of Adjustment governs variances and the, there's language in the code that provides that the Board of Adjustment deals with variances uh, for your land development regulations. The other change I made is based on the page 5 of 6 under subsection D of the ordinance where I added some language, the last sentence of paragraph D which says further all existing artificial turf and I added not in compliance with this section and then must be replaced within 10 years of the adoption of this ordinance. So those are the only two changes I made from the ordinance that you saw at the uh, Joint uh, Commission and PNC meeting. Thank you. Public comment? Yes, Peter. Good evening, all, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Um, last week, uh, as a result of uh, the efforts of uh, my neighbors and myself, uh, listening to each of the things that uh, all of you have discussed uh, in the meetings. Uh, this is the fourth. Um, I tried to pull together with the assistance of my neighbors an alternative vision of an ordinance. And specifically what I tried to do with their help is uh, craft a regulatory ordinance that did not require uh, a variety of things uh, in the draft now before you. Uh, that was given to the town clerk's office on Thursday, and uh, I was uh, led to believe that if I handed this to Carla, mm -hmm. it might actually become part of the record of the town. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to do that now. Uh, the second document, um, I included because uh, several of you had talked about the issue of balance between environmental protection and benefit uh, and environmental cost. And if one found that these two issues with regard to synthetic grass were essentially in balance, there were goods and bads on both sides. So uh, that's, I believe, in your packet. Uh, it was a just an article from Gardenista talking about that. So uh, very quickly, I'd like to uh, ask that you give consideration to an alternative ordinance uh, in which regulation is the primary theme, guidance to the taxpayers of this town as to what would be appropriate use of synthetic grass and what would be inappropriate. And to that end, uh, that is what this alternative does. I should also say it includes uh, a clear set of whereases that state the public purpose uh, we're trying to achieve. Uh, it details in uh, quite precise language following exactly the text that originated in Lantana, uh, the kinds of things, the kinds of uh, regulatory concerns and uh, if you have questions about it, I would be delighted to entertain them. Uh, but I thought, having listened to each of you talk many times over the last three meetings, that some alternative would be a good idea and might help shape the final discussion. With that, with five seconds left, I will say thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ted Ratona, 4 Hudson Avenue. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Um, surely the atmosphere and the mood in this room were significantly different only 48 hours ago. It was a lovely affair. 
that the Garden Club put on this last Friday. Sometimes timing is tough, and timing is tough for me right now. I'm here because of the following. Vice Mayor Magruder, you stepped forward when the commission was in need of replacement a few years ago. We commend you for that and thank you for your service. But today is a very different scenario. As you have made us all aware, you have chosen to leave our beautiful Ocean Sign community. We wish you well, but as a commissioner, you're supposed to represent the residents of our town, not your personal bias. I can assure you that most of us in attendance tonight are not in favor of this ordinance passing. In light of that fact, you should not allow your personal bias to affect our town going forward, especially when you will no longer be part of it. We have a lot of ordinances already in place that do a fair amount of restricting, restricting and protecting what goes on in town. I recently had a neighbor buy a house, planning to knock it down and rebuild until they became familiar with the so many restrictions. Since then, that property is back up for sale. They have bought elsewhere in town with a much smaller project in line. Back to the artificial turf, turf issue. Since you are leaving, and this will not affect you either way, and you appear to be the deciding vote, I ask you to give in to what the majority of the residents want and recuse yourself from this vote. One more thing about study funding. I know in my business, and I believe in most business, it's true. It depends on who funds studies to get the results they want. It can be a study that supports one thing, and there could be another one that defeats it. So we need to be aware of that. I know I have singled you out, Vice Mayor. I apologize for that, but many do not want this restriction. Thanks again for your service, but voting here for passage of this ordinance is a disservice. Um, I need Brian to state what the law is regarding recusing yourself from a vote. I don't see, well, I mean, if there is a personal financial gain or loss to you, I'm assuming, and I can't see where there's a personal financial gain or loss to the vice mayor on this, unless you don't own, uh, to my knowledge, you don't own a turf company. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, that's, that's essentially in a very simplified form, that's what the law is. That so. he cannot recuse himself unless he has that is to the vote. Case. He so has correct. to vote. That's okay. under Florida state statute. He is required to vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you. Well, just to play devil's advocate, because I'm on the other side of the coin from Don, Don could vote to send this back for some rewrites, which would then recuse himself from the final decision by de, de facto. Well, whatever vote is taken today, Commissioner Magruder would need to, to vote. vote on that, whatever that motion is. And, and once again, I don't want to single out Commissioner Magruder because you all did adopt rules recently that basically say we you know, that the public nor the council members should single anyone out. And I understand that, you, you know, you, you know, you kind of at the end said, okay, look, here, here's kind of the reason I'm doing that. I get that, but I just want to point that, that out for the mayor's attention there on that. I have a quick question for the attorney. Can he vote present if he wants to? To me, that's not a vote. I mean, a vote is yes or no. So I'm not aware of just voting present as taking action on any item. In our Congress, they vote present. Well, they do a lot of things in our Congress that we don't do <laughs> here that we aren't allowed to do, so. Um. Well, let me respond. Um, I don't know how I ended up being the deciding vote on this. It is not a personal prejudice or a personal bias. Um, I've looked at this quite a bit, um, and when I first started uh, my discussion, I brought up the fact of home rule. Artificial turf is that it's in its infancy currently. It's changing as far as makeup, um, as far as the product, the uh, uh, permeability, uh, the colors, uh, the installation methods, and so on and so forth are changing constantly. The the fact that um, the majority of the citizens have said that they wanted artificial turf, I believe it was Art that came up and said that there was 160 members or residents in town 
that um, preferred to have no ordinance passed. But that's about 10% of the town. I haven't heard very little from anybody north of um, Old Ocean Boulevard. Uh, matter of fact, that uh, those residents have been res relatively quiet uh, on the issue. So I'm, I don't know how they feel one way or the other. The other thing that we've talked about is the uh, pros and cons. And I think the residents of the town did an exceptional job of coming up and stating your, your preference and, and the reasons that uh, the pros of um, artificial turf and the cons of artificial turf. But what happens is if we do not pass an ordinance now and we put it off, we will have everyone rushing, not everyone, but we'll have a lot of people rushing to put down artificial turf where they want and how they want and the colors that they want. We've already seen that in the delay of the last <coughs> meetings that we had. There was some artificial turf installed last Thursday that's questionable whether it's over a septic system or not. But the fact is that we have no regulation to prevent that. Um, and while the um, PNC worked long and hard on this ordinance that is before us now, it's not perfect. Uh, and it can be modified later on um, with more citizen involvement. Um, and I think for the benefit of the town, I mean, We've got the Supreme Court has just come down and says what kind of si the size signs that you can have. So the state and the Supreme Court and so on and so forth, everybody is coming in trying to tell us what we can and we can't do. If we have this ordinance on the books, we can modify it later on. The one that I keep coming back with is the um, uh, Airbnb. Did that, did we get a... Deci decision on that today? Not yet, no. Still no, but they, they, they amended it. it. They, they amended amended it, it. Mm -hmm. um, put it up for vote be to amend it so that we would be able to govern ourselves right. Right. on that area. And then, so and then the rules committee out. didn't take it up today. Right. They, right. They but, up. But mm -hmm. So for those reasons, um, <clears throat> it's it's I just really feel that it's better for the town to put this ordinance in effect now so that we have something on the books that protect us. And then that can be modified through the Planning and Zoning Commission as we move forward. And I'm sorry that um, you all feel like I'm the, um, the sole folk that's going to take it this way, but um, I'm only one of uh, five commissioners. Is Jean here? Do you want to speak to home rule? Are you versed on that? Uh, Peter's wife, Jean, is a, a judge out of New York, uh, <coughs> New Hampshire Superior Court judge. And she educated me on uh, home rule. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a misunderstanding here. But um, I prefer a lawyer explain it. But I, I'd be happy to speak to it, but in my capacity as the retired state senator. And I'll approach the... Well, well, let me tell you what I believe Jean told me, because you were standing right there. The, we all look at the Airbnb situation and go, thank God we had an ordinance in place to stop short-term rentals before home rule came in and told us we couldn't have a rule. In other words, we had a rule in place in 2011. That's not what home rule did. What home rule did is said that you can have short-term rentals, and then it granted an exception so if home rule comes in and tells us that we have to allow artificial turf, they have to grant us an exception as part of their ruling. So it, it's the use of home rule on these occasions is uh, inaccurate. Am I correct? You're correct. And may I take in the last three seconds that I didn't use? If Tallahassee decides to tell this town to do yes or no on artificial turf, they're going to do it. And there is absolutely nada you can do now to divert them from what they decide to do. So the notion, if I may, Mr. Vice Mayor, that somehow you're warding off uh, the evil geniuses up in Tallahassee, uh, no, you're not. It would be a good thing to pass the best ordinance you could possibly come up with and do that. Um, could I ask uh, our town attorney to... Um, 
discuss home rule? Well, I mean, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, home rule came about because there was a change, I believe, in the uh, Constitution that allowed us to govern ourselves provided we were not preempted by the state or the county. Uh, there are certain places where the county has preemption powers and there are certain cases where the state has preemption powers. Short of that, we are allowed to enact any law that we want to also that does not, uh, that is, does not contravene state or county law or federal law uh, as far as that goes. So that's what municipalities do. Now, as far as adopting an ordinance uh, before the state takes some action, I can't say in all cases, but in a lot of cases, the state will, for lack of a better term, say, okay, we're changing the law. However, for those municipalities, now there are some cases where the state says, no, we're enacting a new law and everybody's got to apply, you know, everybody's got to follow it and that's the end of it. Um, but in a lot of cases, the state says, no, we're enacting a new law. However, for those municipalities that already have a law in the books, you're allowed to keep that law. Um, now, I can't give specific examples. I mean, the vacation rental one is one that comes to mind, that whatever you adopted prior to 2011 uh, was good. So no matter what the state has done, as long as you had something on the books prior to 2011, you can follow that and you aren't bound by what the state says. Right, but Brian, if we have that law, this ordinance, and say it's the artificial turf, and it's not a good one, we, right. we find problems with it, if we change it, we're not grandfathered in, right? Because it depends. No. It depends, okay? Because just like on the vacation rental one, they had specific language that they had adopted in 2014 that they had since peeled back in, I think, 2017. But in 2014, they had adopted language that further restricted our abilities to, uh, to do some, you know, to further enact rules and regulations on vacation rentals. Basically, not only could you not uh, regulate the length of time or the duration of rentals, there were certain other things that they said we couldn't do either. I believe in 20, I think it was 2017 maybe, the state came out and said, no, we're going to kind of backpedal on this, and we're only going to say you cannot enact an ordinance that impacts the length or duration uh, or the number of times you may have a vacation rental. And currently, right now, that is on the books. Uh, so what a lot of municipalities have done, they've enacted other rules and regulations that the state is now trying to take a look at because they're you know, municipalities are saying, okay, well, we aren't going to regulate in that. We're going to regulate in another area such as licensing and, well, you've got to have this and you've got to have other things for the safety of the renter, making it more like regulations like what a hotel may have to have. Uh, so it's my understanding that that has probably triggered why the state is looking at some of their regulations. So it all depends on what the state law says. I, I, I don't know. There's no hard and fast rule on it because I've seen it in so many different ways and once you're talking about what Tallahassee can or can't do, it's all bets are off. Yeah, but so. wouldn't it wouldn't be the smart move is to make the ordinance correct the first time, then have to modify it later, like then Don is suggesting. He, he, my his suggestion, I thought, was let's just get it on the books so that we're grandfathered in, and if we it's got a lot of problems or it's got problems, I shouldn't say a lot, if it's got problems, we'll fix it later. Isn't it better to delay it a little bit to get some of these answers and then put an ordinance out that's a good ordinance that we can all accept? Oh, okay, and my understanding, and I, I could and I would defer to staff or uh, uh, Corio Gorman or, or Lisa Trapepi, but it's my understanding that the ordinance is before, that's before you right now, I am not aware of any issues like, oh, well, we need to fix this or we need to fix that. What I'm, what would normally happen is that let's say that if you did adopt this ordinance tonight and it starts applying and then people start applying for permits because so far in the past we haven't required permits for this people start coming in and applying for permits and at that point in time staff may or may not say oh well there's an issue here that we have to change but we aren't aware of it and this is like any ordinance i mean i can't tell you how many ordinances over the years that when we adopt something we realize oops there's, there's something in here that we didn't think about and we need to modify it. So I can't tell you that we aren't going to have to modify this one sometime in the future. 
I imagine we would have to, but we don't know what the issues are until, or it's my understanding we don't know, you know, that there's, there's issues that we're looking to change right now. Well, I, I, I have a couple of them. The first one is I think everybody agrees we shouldn't be putting AstroTurf off a, over a leash field, right? But we have that that's allowed, to, we're going to let that happen. No, for no, a, that's, for that's for not allowed. That's not allowed by state law. That's not allowed by the Palm Beach County exactly. Health Department. There may be numerous laws out there that's not included in your ordinance that would still govern what people can or cannot do. But they've done it, but you, you, you basically said, or the ordinance says that they have 10 years to have that uh, astro no. No. So if, you're saying our ordinance says they have to dig it up now? No, no, if it is existing, okay. If, let's say if you adopt this now, and let's say currently right now someone has turf over uh, a drain field area, something like that, okay. Then at the end of 10 years, um, and, and before that, uh, you know, uh, or we would have to, I'm assuming, and I don't know, I'd probably have to defer to the town manager to see how, you know, how it's going to be determined where there's areas that we think, well, here's the turf, because there's probably areas that we aren't going to know if they're existing now or not existing there now. And the only way that a lot of times we find out about this stuff is when people come in for a new permit or something, and then we start looking and realize, well, you didn't get a permit, where you, was this in place prior to the adoption of this ordinance? And also, if it was over a drain field or something like that, which it probably shouldn't have been because... Palm Beach County is my understanding, they do not allow it. Now, I don't know the exact ordinance and I don't know the exact citation to that that says that's not allowed. I've just heard that from, I think, our town engineer that that is not allowed. It's in okay. the memo, Brian. Okay, all right. Can I sorry. just finish the, the second issue? Now, let's assume, right, that artificial turf, and we're going to agree with the people that are against it, causes cancer, right? kills the baby fish because they eat, eat the microfilm or uh, fiber, right? It causes MRSA, and this is what people have told us over time, right? That it's the worst thing to do, right? So now we're gonna create an ordinance that says you cannot have it in your front yard. However, if we don't see it, you can put it in your backyard. So we don't care if there's cancer, we don't care if there's MRSA, as long as we don't see it. And my point is, isn't that an aesthetic issue as compared to an environmental issue? And that's why for the last two meetings, I've been asking for a deferral so that we can really decide, is it really bad for the environment or are the people that are saying it causes cancer, Mercer, and all this other stuff, is, are they right? Or are the people saying it saves water, it saves pe pesticides, it says, saves carbon uh, um, monoxide, whatever, and they're right. And that's my point. We, we don't know, or I don't know anyway, yeah. the rest of you seem to know that it's an environmental problem, but I don't know. I don't have enough facts to weigh it. And that's why I've been asking for the so deferral. Can I, can I weigh in with you, Phil? Sure. I mean, you went, you went to the most exaggeratory ends. If someone, I don't, I've never heard MRSA up here or any of the other stuff we're talking oh, about, right. the, about the environmental from impacts. From somebody else. But what I keep hearing is that if it's not, you know, an evil, uh, an evil thing to your personal health, that we shouldn't do anything about it and we shouldn't do anything about aesthetics. 99% of our ordinances deal with aesthetics. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with that. And I, and I, I don't understand why we should apologize for a town that we have ordinances that control the aesthetics of what our community standards are and what we look like. Right, but that's a blight but, but it's issue. Been plain, it's not a blight issue. You're going to wait till it's done and then correct it? Mm. No. Well, I'm saying if you put it under blight that it can't be rolling and, the, uh, and it looks like a carpet and it's purple, you can put that in there. I, I don't disagree with that. But if it's nice looking green, you know, I, I go down... Um, uh, so again, your definition of what is personally acceptable of aesthetics is different than mine, and I think that's just a. You know, yeah, but oh, what you're saying is that your definition is right, his is wrong. No, that's, I'm not. That's yeah, I'm not. He's disagreeing with his. But anyway, but did anyone read this ordinance that Peter wrote? Yeah, it's Peter, very good. It's very good. It's very and good. And it contains some that material that that actually I could think everyone up here would want in an ordinance. 
Part the two. synthetic grass shall be lead free, no tire crumble. All materials involved have to be manufactured and from the United States of America. And it, it, I mean, it's the, and the standards here for what type of um, materials you can use. So it's it's very good. So so I don't the, understand why we're resisting if the putting in. Was passed. One of the the key issues with the ordinance is permitting, which gives the the building inspector to the authority to be able to come in. Now, if if it's permitted, and we suspect that we have a resident that's placed um, artificial turf over a septic system or whatnot, he can notify the health department and the health department can come out. But if we don't have the permitting in place where that gives um, the building inspector the authority to do those types of things, to, to go out and do an inspection or see whether, you know, if somebody comes in, like, like we've already done, we've seen where we put it off and then Katie bar the door. People are gonna just say, well, we're getting ready to pass an ordinance. Let me get down my purple turf right now before they pass the ordinance. I think I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Don. If you're <laughs> gonna make that motion, I'm gonna agree with you. I, I thought it was gonna be the original ordinance that we're gonna to pass today. That's it what is. I That's wanted what to That is exactly what we're talking but, but about. Yeah. Well, all he's saying, well, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but you're saying as long as it's permitted and we approve it, and it meets certain criteria. Right. Well, well that's the, the whole issue. issue. The so it says. Keith Thurlick has done a great job of redefining what the PNZ did. And if so, if you pass the ordinance, then you can come back to PNZ and say, look, you know, this definition is much better than what you did. Let's put this in. But if we don't do the permitting, uh, like I'm saying, it, it, that's one of the key issues. And artificial turf is in its infancy, it is changing. And I, I can tell you, with the, the little plaque says here, the little water boy, I understand <laughs> the advantages of artificial turf. But I do think we're going to end up going that way. And I think the more we have problems with Lake Okeechobee and the water supply and so on and so forth, you're going to see the state want to see more artificial turf installed. And all I'm trying to do is say, let's get ahead of it, right, wrong, or indifferent. So let's get some ordinances in this town that permitting that so that we have some control over what goes on. But why would we pass an ordinance that we're going to change next right. month or the because following if you month? Why don't, don't we change it now, Phil? Between now and next month, you're going to get three or four more green grass put in. We've already had one put in between the last meeting we had, the 24th. Is there a way to put a moratorium in like we oh did God. with the building? To say moratorium, no more artificial grass until we straighten this out? Well, we don't have an ordinance regulating it, right. so you can't really yeah. do a moratorium on something you don't <laughs> regulate. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to say that I that think the what they've crafted it, right? is exactly a compromise. Nobody on this diet said cancer. Nobody said mayors. That came from some other people speaking, okay? So nobody up here was, was calling the alarm or going crazy, but it absolutely is not environmentally friendly. It breaks up our habitat. It doesn't pull in the carbon dioxide, which is what green space does. And aesthetically, I'm not a big fan. So I think this giving us percentage in the shielded side and back is a good compromise. Now, as for the guys that have it on the drain field, and that's something that that's the health good. department's probably going to work on separately. Probably should have never gone down to begin with, but we didn't have any regulation, much less permitting to even know that. That's going to be somebody else's problem eventually. But you just ignored Phil's entire thing no, about I didn't. the environment. No, you're, no, you're I, stating as fact that it's environmentally damaging. That, it, absolutely. That if you go to the people that produce sod and fertilizers, yes, they fund those studies. No, they, I went to went studies that I no, I know, I know. I also know not to look at the ones that are advertisements. I got that. Right, and I, and I totally we got have that. nothing right now. If uh, somebody comes to Wayne for a permit, they can install artificial turf that has lead. Uh, did we take care of rubber infill? I don't even think we took they, care of that. We talked about that. That's most. We that's about, the, but that's not the, in the ordinance. And the materials could be coming from China and not meet any of the standards that are stamped on. So what Peter's trying to do is what I thought that Don was driving at. He's trying to put regulations in place to protect the safety and health of the citizens without being draconian 
in limiting what they can do on that private property. I'd like to call for a vote. I'd like to make a motion to accept ordinance. Where are we? What is it? <laughs> oh, 2019-15 on second reading as written. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? So, now let's do the roll call. Brian taught me this. <laughs> roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Bessler? Uh, no. Mayor Koss? No. Commissioner DeHassis? Yes. Commissioner Herbert? Yes. Vice Mayor Magruder? Deciding vote? Yes. yes. Okay. Let's take the bed. Yep, there they go. <laughs> Wait, well, it's also there. <laughs> it's a, hey, we're having a bake Everybody sale for beautification. Did you adjourn the meeting? No. No, we can't. Please, refreshment. Is it something we said? <laughs> Tracy is here? Yep. Okay, moving on to item number five. Authorize town manager Stevens to transfer fund town funds between general operating accounting and money marketing account as needed. Tracy? Yes, at the February 3rd meeting, the town commission authorized me to transfer $2 million from the general fund to the money market account at City National Bank in order to maximize our interest income as the CD rates were too low at that time to invest. We're currently earning interest in our money market account with a rate of 1.65% and the current CD rates are 1.60 for a three month, 1.65 for a six month, 1.70 for a nine month and 1.75 for a 12 month. Since we're already earning 1.65 on our money market account, I'm recommending that we wait to purchase another CD until the rates rise. I'm requesting that the town commission give me authority to transfer funds from the general fund to the money market account and vice versa as needed throughout the year to continue to maximize the town's interest income and to ensure we have adequate cash flow to meet our obligations. I would also request that although you would be giving me that authority, there would be to cover me some sort of commission signature, kind of like we do on the, the checks that you sign. I would want a commissioner to sign that as part of a check run. So not only signing checks, but also signing that I'm doing a transfer. So if somebody makes a motion, they should include that. That safeguard. I'll make the motion. But we, we have to do public comment. This is really bookkeeping. Commissioner Conner? Sure? All right. So I'm, mm -hmm. I move to authorize Town Manager Stevens to transfer funds as needed from the general fund to the money market account and vice versa as needed to maximize the town's interest income and to ensure the town has adequate cash flow to meet its obligations, and when she is making that transfer, one of the commissioners also signs the same paper. Thank you. I'll second. Good. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, item number six. Resolution number 2020-06, resolution of the commission amending the adopted schedule of fees for various services and providing an effective date. Tracy? Yes, town staff collectively reviewed the town's fee schedule and we proposed revisions. Um, we attach those as Appendix A and Appendix B in your package. The amendments were highlighted in yellow for you. The proposed changes are a reduction in the certificate of occupancy completion review from $1,000 to a $250 minimum a reduction of the temporary certificate of occupancy completion for, from $500 to $250 per condition. We are reducing the low voltage alarm system permit labels from $50 to $40 in accordance with Florida statutes. We're adding a fee of $50 minimum for land alteration permits, which would be the dune planting, fill permits, lot clearing, tree permits in order to comply with our town code. We're adding a fee for right-of-way agreements and hold harmless agreements to comply with our town code. 
changing the term concept plan review to development plan review in accordance with the town code, clarifying the sign permit fees in accordance with town code and removing the tree permit fee from appendix A to appendix B in the land alteration permit section. Any public comment? Commission discussion? This is just mainly housekeeping. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. But last time I used the word, everyone laughed at me. <laughs> 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 no, I said bookkeeping. 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 This is mainly to comply with yeah. state statutes and our town code. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll All make right. the motion. I move to adopt resolution 2020 06, amending the town fee schedule effective immediately. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Approve the, this is item number seven, approve the 2020 budget meeting schedule. Tracy? Yes, taking into consideration the trim, which is truth and millage guidelines in conjunction with the town commission regular meeting schedule and also staff schedules. Staff proposed the goal setting and budget meeting dates, which you received in your packages. Um, the dates that we have all fall on town commission meeting dates and we thought that would be easier to schedule this year to get everyone together. The only one that is different is the second and the final public hearing and adoption of the budget. Um, that would be held on September 21st at 6 p.m. And also due to a holiday, um, we cannot hold the regular meeting on September 7th because that's Labor Day. So we're proposing to move that to the next day, which is a Tuesday. <coughs> that's so not part of this, so we have to worry about so that. So commission would be on Tuesday the 8th. Yes. Right. Okay. So are the, only, the only thing you're lock, trying to lock down is Monday, September 21st, because we know um, as we move forward. Yeah, I'm trying to lock down the whole schedule that was presented. Right. But right. the one that must remain is the 21st. Yeah. Right? No, um, we could change it, but I would have to go back and look at the time, right, the trim timeline. You have to have it done for the state by yes, a certain time. Correct. That's why that's important. Yes. Okay, public uh, discussion, commissioner comments. How long did our first goal setting workshop last last time? It seems a long time. I'm just looking because you're saying that we would have the commission meeting mm -hmm. after. So yeah, I'm we could we could hold this sooner if you'd like. Do we at have? 2 PM. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm looking to y'all because mm -hmm. it seemed Good like idea. it was more than two hours. Then jumping right into there, does uh, does anybody remember how long that went? At, at least two hours. I at also least two hours, it, right? Don't you think? I like mm -hmm. the worksheet that you did ahead of time for us. Also. Right. I thought mm -hmm. that that was very very helpful. <laughs> so should we do it earlier? Everybody yep. likes the idea of it on the same day, just earlier, and maybe a break or. Yep. So what would be a good time? Two p.m. I think two is good. Like but the rest of them. Maybe we should limit it as well. Is what? And say we're going to end. Well, I think you just got to end when you've gone through everything, right? Cause well, should we move it up even further? At two o'clock sounds good. It you shouldn't think take we need more to than go? three hours, and then you'll that's have an I hour think. break. Okay. Right. That's what I'm thinking. No, okay. That's right. Cause okay. Last year we all had so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Didn't you, you can bring, bring in dinner? Something? So at two versus four. So that's our change. Okay. Uh, motion. With the change, whoever makes the motion. Okay. Uh, what are we moving? Don, you want to do your last motion? Here? Yeah. How about something move like... Move to adopt uh, the move, move to schedule, adopt schedule yeah. with the amendment of, of the moving the May 4th till to 2, to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. So move, Don. Did you want to do it, Don? I'm fine. So go ahead, Susan. Why don't you do it? You made the change. So moved. <laughs> I'll second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous, I believe. It was. Okay, item number eight. Uh, you have a 7A now. Oh, 7A. Yep. You're right. right. Really I just right. went to eight because my point was Resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Ocean Ridge declaring a state of local emergency. Uh, this is involving the beach erosion for who's mm -hmm. ever here for beach erosion. Yeah, so um, as you know, you passed a resolution at yeah. your last meeting uh, as an emergency resolution for the beach erosion. However, the DEP asked us to change some wording in it. So this is the, the suggested language from DEP. This was approved by DEP to come forward like this. That pretty much sums it up, Brian, right? We don't need to read it. Yes. That. Okay. Any public comment? Just so if people weren't at the last meeting, it's to help a series of homes on the ocean in Ocean Ridge that are having tremendous erosion problems. Okay, commission discussion? No, pretty straightforward. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2020-07. So 
second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, unanimous, Carl. Okay. That's our agenda items. Now we move to staff reports. Town Manager Tracy. Yes, in conjunction with what we just talked about with the emergency resolution, staff has been working with DEP and the Department of Vi Environmental Resources Management on permitting to replace our public beach crossover at Anna Street and repair our Edith Street crossover. And those both were damaged by recent storms and king tides that have caused severe dune erosion. Um, as well as temporary armoring permits for the homes at risk. However, we have run into several roadblocks with DEP regulations. We still continue to work diligently with them to resolve these issues as quickly as possible in order to protect our residents' <coughs> properties. That is our main concern right now, and we will work on this very hard to make sure we move forward on this. Um, please join us for the Save the Seas Plastic Free event at Town Hall on Saturday, March 21st from 10 to 3. We want to thank Mickey Farley and the rest of the members of the Garden Club for their outstanding efforts in planning this event for our residents. We hope to see you all there. The annual financial audit process is around 98% complete at this time. The town auditors provided me with a draft audit report and there are no findings in the report, which is great news. The town auditor will present the final audit report to the town commission once it's completed, hopefully at your next meeting. As a member of the Coastal Resilience Partnership Working Group, I participated in the CRP bid evaluation meeting for the Multi-Jurisdictional Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment. After discussion and scoring by each member, the bid was awarded to Collective Water Resources to complete our vulner vulnerability assessment. As part of the process, the CRP will be holding a series of workshops, including a mayor's roundtable over the next several months to educate elected officials and other stakeholders regarding the vulnerability assessment initiative. The town of Gulfstream appointed me as a member of their audit selection committee. The committee met recently to review and approve the request for proposals and will meet again once the bids are received in order to make a recommendation to the town commission in Gulfstream. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, more great news, we finally received our FEMA grant funds for Hurricane Irma in the amount of 115351 These funds will go directly into the reserve funds of the town at the end of the fiscal year, as this revenue is not budgeted for since we never know when we're going to expect our grant funds. We're currently in the process of applying for FEMA grant funds to cover our expenses for Hurricane Dorian as well, but we shouldn't expect to receive those grant funds for another year, two, or three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions of Tracy? 513 was what I was talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, it, it's, it, it'll be sitting there and we can deal with it right now. Okay. Can I make one quick comment regarding DEP and uh, Anna Street? Mm -hmm. I assume at some point you're going to grant access to the dune area through Anna Street for, for the vehicles to repair. Is that how we're going to do it? Are the private owners going to ask for access to the dune area? Mm -hmm. through Anna Street yeah it depends it depends on the project okay. so it could it could happen that way they could also access from the oceanfront park area yeah right okay so it's all going to depend on the projects but and I'm just suggesting that if you use if you grant them Anna Street that you get an ironclad contract and you make them improve it better than it was before you get a Horse oh, trade yeah. them if they want access. Mm -hmm. They got to put in a better pad, a concrete pad. It's better already in the works. <laughs> on their ticket, not yes, on ours. Right. Correct. Yes, okay. it's already in and the works. And you put it in a contract. Mm -hmm. It's already Thank in you. the works. Brian, uh, no report. Police chief. Monthly report for January for fire EMS and the police department is included in your packet. If you have no questions, um, I'll move on. We always ask this question, but. The, the new firehouse was going to open in Feb, and now it's been pushed back. I believe, it's, a, believe it's April is what I've been April. told. April. Uh, if you look at it, it is uh, nearing completion. Um, yeah. Some finishing touches going on it, and they continue to say April. So I'm hope, hopefully optimistic. Okay. Any other questions? I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that over the last week, many people have received a lot of notifications on Civic Ready. <laughs> um, yep. It is working as it is intended. We've had boil water notices, wires down, car crashes, pedestrians hitting in other areas that would help you uh, 
when we notify you not go there and, and maybe get to your destination faster, we would encourage you, if you like that, please tell your neighbors. Uh, I know that I've heard some feedback that certain people didn't get notifications, and when I ask them if they have the app, they go, well, no. Well, <laughs> you have to opt in. Please opt in. Uh, you can opt in for what you want. So if you don't want to receive text messages, you don't have to. If you don't want to receive emails, if you don't want to receive phone calls, you, it's your choice, and you can change that as you go along. Please avail yourself to it. It's the only good, quick means of communications we have to give you that timely information. How many residents are on there? I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but the last time it was about 300 or 400 had signed up. So. It, it, you don't have to be a resident to sign up for it <coughs> necessarily. Sure. You can you can be a, a business person. You can just have an interest in the town mm -hmm. um, because it's an opt-in system. Turtle season has begun. It is uh, March the 2nd. It started yesterday. That means that we will begin doing our annual turtle season light audit. Please don't get mad at the police officers who leave notes on your doors in the middle of the night reminding you to shield your lights from the beach. Uh, we're required to do that with, by agreement with Palm Beach County Department of Environmental Protection. <coughs> Coronavirus. We've received a lot of information on coronavirus. Uh, I don't believe that there's a need to panic. We're trying to gather as much information so that the town of Ocean Ridge can be as prepared as possible. We're working with the fire department to, to make sure that all of our protocols are in line with those of the national, state, and county agencies. I just want to put on the record that the symptoms of it are fever, cough, shortness of breath. And the concern is if you have traveled to China, Italy, Iran, South Korea, or Japan, if you have and you have those symptoms, please call ahead. Don't deliver yourself to an emergency room. Don't go to the doctor. Call your doctor or the health department, and they will make a determination through us and EMS as to what the proper protocol will be to make sure that we don't infect anyone else. If you have not and you feel those symptoms, I would urge you to call your doctor's office before you go there, and they may ask you to use a different entrance or different protocols. You can't get coronavirus from the air. It is spread much like any other virus through the droplets of your uh, of contact for saliva, uh, bodily fluids, and things like that. Um, the information received from the health department as late as this afternoon indicates that the symptoms mimic the flu, and the flu has made a reappearance. We've had it here. Um, we've had two bouts of it in the town hall. Um, have spread by about three months, uh, which is unusual. So please err on the side of caution. Your town EMS and police response are all gearing up to be ready to come and determine whether we need to take you away in a suit or whether you just need to go to the doctor. Um, we have on site the proper personal protective devices that you see on TV. Um, more information will be coming out on Friday from our Palm Beach County partners. We'll be attending a, a, a briefing on the actual <coughs> protocols in place um, to make sure that we're responding appropriately and not overreacting or underreacting to the situation. Please watch the news. That's the best source of information right now. It's coming out of Washington, it's coming out of Atlanta, and it's coming out of Tallahassee. Uh, I think they're giving good information. Any words for the chief? Thank you. Thank you. You already have the protective gear. That's the most important thing I heard. For we have officers. we have basic personal protective gear, and, and, and every time one of these things ramps up, and they tell us that everything's selling out. You know, one of the precautionary is wash your hands with alcohol-based sanitizer, and then wash them under water for 20 mm -hmm. seconds, and then dry them. The same thing you have with the flu. <clears throat> we're just making sure that we're prepared to deal with this and not contaminate everybody by us getting infected. Um, so we're we're in our preparation phase. I, you probably should be too, um, as you see fit. Cool, Wayne. <coughs> Reports are uh, in front of you. Um, we've got uh, no court enforcement hearings uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, we're going to have to answer them. Anybody got any questions on the code enforcement or hearings? Okay. Any commissioner comments? 
All right, meeting is adjourned.